I think I should start recording my backup. That's what I think I should do. There you go. That's your other guest in case I suck. All right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where's my kazoo? Uh, hey, welcome to Montreal Sauce, the show where we talk to makers, creators, and rad people live for my mom and the other 11 mystery people on the feed right now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're saying to yourself, now, wait a second. I can't tune in live all the time and listen to your show. I, I want to download it. And we, we do that, too. You can download it on our webpage, montrealsauce.com, which if you're listening now, you're there. <laughs> or you can do iTunes. And maybe you're saying, but wait, I've been waiting for a show you recorded months ago. Why isn't it out yet? Well, that's easily explained. Um, what makes Montreal Sauce uh, really unique is that uh, when we get done recording it, we give this recording of the live show to three voice actors who perfect impressions of all of us and then <laughs> re-record the entire show. Uh, and uh, it's that we're that meticulous about the auto audio and autos. We love cars. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it takes us sometimes three months to post downloads on the site. Uh, and you thought it was because, you know, our life got in the way or we don't take the show serious. But obviously we take it very serious. To <laughs> if anything, out. we take it mm -hmm. too seriously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These aren't Fiverr voice actors, people. These are real voice actors. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark Muir is doing me. So. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I probably should have said my name is Chris. Uh, let's see. My uh, my character sheet says I am a talking avocado <laughs> brought to life by my co-host and the wizard in our party, Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello. <laughs> it's, a, it's a level four spell to make a you know avocado into Chris. So <laughs> that's right. If you had done level three, I would just be guacamole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tonight we've got with us a developer who does mobile, web, and games. He loves coding and bringing ideas to life. He's passionate about helping charities, participating in the maker community, and the Dreamcast startup intro. Uh, <laughs> one of his more <laughs> recent projects is a game for the Oculus called Dot uh, that has been greenlit on Steam. Um our non-existent studio audience, please give a warm welcome to Aaron Clifford. Hello, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice. Um, yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> they, they're non-existent, but they can clap well. Well, exactly. <laughs> it, you don't have to have, you know, a physical body in order to clap. You can just move the air. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The downside is, is you don't have a have, have to have a physical body to get the clap either. Good night, everyone. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, we've we've gone there already. But yay. <laughs> so, Aaron, I read as I uh, stalked you. I researched. Uh, <laughs> I read that you've been coding for fifteen years. Uh, I I feel like uh, you know. You look pretty young in all of your uh, profile pictures. Did you start when you were like a, just a babe hacking like a speaking spell or something? Uh, no, um, all of my most of my profile pictures uh, look young because I am also good at Photoshop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 42. So and I've been coding probably for like I've been coding professionally for actually going on close to 20 years now. And, uh, and before that, uh, since I was about 12, uh, I had a, an Atari, um, an Atari 600 XL with a 300 nice. baud modem and a cassette drive. And nice. My first, awesome. my first ever program that I built was in basic and it was, um, a choose your own adventure fighting game. So it was like, what do you do? One punch, two kick, three block. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the classic so yeah so, so i've been doing this for a very very long time on and off <laughs> <laughs> i miss basic because it's the only language i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was uh it was fun i mean and and it the the funny thing about using a cassette drive back then was that because you actually had to hit like the play and record together in order to save your program Right. And then, yep. and then so you'd hit record and then you'd 
tell it to start saving on the on the computer and <clears throat> but there were there were actually a couple little tricks you could do you could make it so that when the program loaded in the program you could tell it to just hit play on the cassette drive for a certain amount of time and that was your background music <laughs> so you'd actually you'd take your program tape and put it in your boom box and record like two minutes of the radio <laughs> and then put it back in. And then after your, com- after your computer loaded your game, you would then have your song, which of course went horribly wrong in a lot of cases because <laughs> you, you'd go and you'd record the songs and you'd be like, Oh, did I remember to fast forward it? No. So you'd, like, our whole program's just wiped. Like. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. But you yeah. overwrote just the last little teeny tiny part of the program that made it all work. <laughs> yeah. But you had wonderful 80s music on there. So, I mean, it, it was all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I I had the tape drive and I remember, um, yeah, I don't think Commodore 64s were that uh, cool or I never figured that part out. But uh, I remember when I finally got to upgrade to a disk drive. And then, like, the tape drive was like, I don't need this anymore. But the disk drive was probably the size of, like, a 1990s laptop. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because it was a five and a quarter floppy. But then on top of that, it's like an external piece, like, not built into the computer. (laughs) So it's just this tremendous thing that, like, even as a child, you couldn't pick up without help from someone. And now we've kind of come full circle again. We've got... VR technology, which is new-ish. I mean, it came around in the 90s and then it's back. But now we've got giant things with cables strapped to our heads. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That's uh, I've actually been in an argument uh, with a friend of mine who I work for. And so as I was publishing on his website, <laughs> I published a story about how I'm waiting for like you know, the hollow deck. I want the hollow deck. I don't want VR. And he's like, no, VR is awesome. And I was like, yeah, okay. And you buy it. I don't want to buy it. And he said, well, no, like you can try it because you're going to love it. And I was like, I have tried it and I'm not going to try yours because I'm not going to put on your sweaty headgear after you've <laughs> used it for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, back to the tape decks. I remember the cool thing about like computer tapes were they weren't like 30 minute or 60 minute tapes. They were very short, but I just remember they looked really cool. Like they were clear and had these really cool like uh, reels inside. So after I was done with them, I started using them to like record cassette singles before those were a thing and give them oh, the frat. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, look at this wicked cool tape I'm giving you. <laughs> It's too yeah, that was a hit with the ladies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes, I had a Commodore 64 and all the ladies I could ever want. No, yeah. <laughs> Lies. Here uh, you go. It's a mixtape of Duran Duran and some uh, basic programs I wrote. <laughs> yeah. I do remember that. I remember like, I'm going to just like listen to the tape and it was the craziest sounds you've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it was all akin to uh, akin to modem noise, basically, right? Yes. Too true. So, uh, you went to school in Devon. Is that high school? Is that where you grew up as well? Uh, sort of. Um, I kind of <laughs> grew up all over the place. So, um, uh, I was uh, I was a little bit of a trouble child. Um, I back then you didn't call it ADHD. But that's what it was. So, <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, I had a hard time focusing in school and everyone was like, oh, he's so smart, but he just won't do anything that we tell him to. And so all that stuff. But I mean, yeah, so we moved around a lot. I uh, I went to school in Edmonton and then out to Devon. And then I went to um, a school here in Edmonton for grade 11 and then a different one for grade 12. And but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. I got to meet I got to learn to meet new people fast. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So you're Alberta born and raised? Uh I was actually um uh you know and uh, <laughs> the the funny story is that the way my mom tells it I was conceived in a tent in uh, New Zealand on acid. 
<laughs> I was okay. quite the hippie. <laughs> and uh, and then born in Vancouver and moved away from Vancouver before I was like one year old, I think. So when I was very young, we moved to Edmonton. And then grew uh, up here. Nice. And then um, I wasn't uh, very uh, in depth with my stalking, but I know you graduated from U of A. Did, was it in <laughs> computer science or IT Let's, or no? Well, I am. Uh, I went to U of A, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did not graduate. Um, I did um, one year of uh, of uh, an English major drama minor uh, with no computer thing whatsoever. I don't even think I took a computer class at, at the U of A, <laughs> and uh, and 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 then kind of washed out and spent a couple years just sort of trying to figure out what I wanted to do and working as a security guard late night shifts. And finally, um, a, uh, um, kind of a friend of a friend said she was, um, looking for some people who could program. And I, uh, you know, and honestly, I had only, the only reason I picked up PC, uh, like working with PCs at all was because of doom. Um, you know, like I, I was mostly a console gamer. I was happy to just play games. Uh, and then, uh, um, doom came out and I was like, Oh man, I need one of these PCs. But at that time you, it actually, you had to learn a lot of stuff just to be a PC gamer. Mm, mm-hmm. Like you had to know about IRC ports and you had to know about like, yeah, there was so <laughs> much stuff. Right. Like, I mean, you'd switch from one game to another and it was like a 20 minute process of adjusting configuration files and like <laughs> and rebooting and you know yeah it wasn't, swap out so, your config sys and your auto exec bat make sure you get the right irq settings and oh yeah yeah, yeah it was uh yeah i mean and so it was just through that process that i kind of started picking it up and then uh um and then uh during my my you know candy raver years i uh <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I kind of started falling in love with, um, like video editing software and I started falling in love with all sorts of stuff like that. And, and then finally landed on flash and, uh, and then it was just like, the, then I was just doe eyed. I was like, well, I can make anything I want and it's so easy. And, and that's when I started making games I started making flash games and having fun with it. And, and that's when a friend of a friend said, well, I've got this company that they just, you know, and that was kind of dot com boom sort of that takes us up to then. OK. And they said, you know, she said, like, there's just there's no there's no not enough programmers for everything that everyone wants to do right now. And so um, I'm taking in people who are interested in computers and I'm training them for um, six weeks on at the time, I think it was authorware, which is just it was like it was for making um uh, educational software on CDs. Sure. Yep. So it was like a CD authoring tool by uh, Macromedia. And, uh, and she was like, so, you know, flash, so you'll be able to pick it up quick. And I'm like, all right. And she's like, cause as soon as you go through this, she's like, I'll teach you how to do it all. And then, uh, she's like, I get a finder's fee and you go work for this company. And I was like, well, sounds good. I mean, it's gonna, I'm going to be making more than I am at security. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no more night shifts. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and then and and it was funny because so my first job completely uneducated, you know, uh, went in and my first job was making training software for NATO Flight Training of Canada. (laughs) 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 Yeah. And it was weird. Like I was like it was just it was such a strange time. I, I mean, I was I was lead programmer for my group within seven months. And it was just bizarre. It was like, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's just, that's how it went. And ever since then, it's been, you know, it's funny. Like I just kind of flow from one job to the next. And cause generally what I like to do is I commit to something I don't know. And now I have to learn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yep. it's like, and that, and that was, you know, that was this, like. You, you just got to keep moving before the imposter syndrome sets in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I know that feeling very well. I uh I am kind of in a similar spot where I uh I 
by day am a computer programmer, even though my uh, my actual degree is in uh, is in film and video, and it's mostly through like, hey, Paul knows how to program. Yeah, uh, can you do X? And I say sure, and then I go figure it out, and uh, and that leads me to the next thing, and I just keep figuring stuff out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I can't do X, but I'm good at Google, and Google can do X. <laughs> so right, exactly, <laughs> somebody out there can do it, and I'm a good imitator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what are your what are you working on right now with the Oculus? With uh, uh, you're working on Dot, right? Yep, yep. So Dot's kind of my my big project that I'm working on right now. Um, but um, almost as big is I'm working with a company called Anumbria, and we're working on um, it's uh, like VR brain training for athletes and for and also. Um, to help rehabilitate people who've suffered uh, like concussions and and that sort of thing. So it's ah, interesting. OK, yeah. So it's uh, it's really just like um, almost like the old cup and shell game. Mm hmm. Right. So you're in a you're in a space. You're supposed to concentrate on a specific point and then things fly around you and you're supposed to try and mentally keep track of them. OK. And okay. Um, and then uh uh, we track a bunch of things on the back end about like how their head's moving, where they're, you know, like ultimately I'd like to do where their gaze is moving as well. And uh, and then we kind of ramp up the difficulty as they go um, one by another. And then their trainer or doctor can go into the back end and see their progress and kind of help make adjustments from there. That's interesting. That's really cool. Like, I, I don't know. It's uh, uh, and it was funny because that came about because of dot um you know like i started doing a vr game and then it was like someone showed up at uh whatever they're calling our annual like fair thing k days capital <laughs> x whatever it is here in edmonton today uh, i think it's k days right now so i was i was showing dot at k days and they uh and someone came up and he said we're working on a vr project and we're kind of stumped on it so you know would you be able to help and so i mean me being me, I was like, yeah, I'd love to. Let's let's do it. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to build a game. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is, you know, it's like uh, as much as I love building games, it's it's hard to turn down something that is, you know, like that's actually going to help people. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Sure. Yeah. And is uh, like Dot is uh, just a side project, right? Uh, yeah. And are you are you uh, are you your own company uh, doing things? I know that you sort of are, but do you have uh, one of those evil day job things as well? Or I do. Um, I actually um, am. Uh, I'm a front end web developer for the government of Alberta right now. So uh, Alberta.ca. If you go to it, um, what you see when it first comes up uh, is uh, a lot of my hard work in the on the javascript and css end and a lot of other people's hard work on everything else so <laughs> basically the way it works is a lot of people do a lot of very hard work and then i put a coat of paint on it and get a lot of the credit so <laughs> which is fine by me um <laughs> As a back-end developer, you ca I can't tell you how much it pleases me to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's so true. Like, I mean, we did um, we did a project that was um, uh, like we did the Open Alberta, which is the uh, open government portal uh, for Alberta, and um, and it was two of us mainly. And I, I mean, I. I, I had to learn some of the back end stuff and I had to do some of it, but not much. I mean, you know, mostly like I got as deep as templating and kind of, you know, doing some calls to the database to get the, the data I needed, but sure. not a whole lot. I mean, I can do a bunch of that stuff. I just don't like to do it as much as I like, you know, making things fly around and be pretty. And <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah. And uh, I mean, it was two of us. But of course, in every meeting, all they can say is, oh, it looks great. It looks great. Like nobody says like, man, those tables are, you know, like that, that data <laughs> is coming out of that database. Like, I'm sure at least 20 milliseconds faster than last week. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, but that's I mean, but that's still stuff that's important. It's just they don't notice it. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, it's it is it, it's a little bit it's a little bit the you know the un, unsung magic in most websites is like if it loaded really fast and you didn't notice it being slow, we did our job. That's exactly. that's basically what it is. It's working, so you know you didn't notice anything was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. It's just like the film industry, right? Like if if you don't notice the wires, then that actor's really great at kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> yep. exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, then I was wondering about that because I was like, oh, I think you were working for the government, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. And actually before. Um, uh, so previous to that, I was working with uh, um, an advertising agency here in the city. But before that, um, I did uh, I worked on the. Um, what is still the current um, Edmonton.ca. So apparently I just go from government to government. <laughs> you know, like, I guess federal's next, so. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I, I make the joke all the time with my wife, and she's sick of it, and she's a teacher here in Edmonton. And when I moved here a few years ago, I was like, so am I having trouble finding work because I'm not in government and I'm not a teacher? Because those are the only two jobs in Edmonton. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, it's I, Edmonton's a government town, and it's yeah. it's that or uh, you know oil, which at the moment is not as good. Um, but <laughs> it's getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slowly but surely. Yeah, a rising tide of oil floats all Alberta boats. <laughs> so. <laughs> I kept saying it was so warm this year because since no one bought it, we just set it on fire. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you're doing, uh, the as you say, you're doing the JavaScript, the front end, and you're trying to make things look pretty. But when it comes to designing some of your apps and games and stuff, you're pretty much doing it all, right? You're doing your own art and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I... Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, it's one of those things where it it's just evolved out of the fact that, um, you know, because I, I, you know, I'm so erratic with my ideas, I don't want to always have to subject another person to having to wait on me. Um, and the other <laughs> thing is, is that especially right now, like I have I have three children. Um, I have a six year old boy and twin four year old girls. Oof. And so. I mean, finding time to work with a team is really tough um, because mostly I have my lunch hour and then from about 9.30 or 10 p.m. till, you know, midnight or one o'clock in the morning uh, every day for my time. But it's really hard to, you know, schedule a team around that time. So I just <laughs> sure. I just yeah. went, well, I can learn it all. It just takes longer. <laughs> <laughs> And I, yeah, I saw that uh, maybe you posted a video of it, but you got sort of obsessed with seaweed when you were doing one of your apps. Oh, geez. Yeah. So uh, that was um, that was really funny, actually. That was um, <laughs> I, every year. I, I love like developer challenges and stuff like that. And uh, and I especially love uh, developer challenges that end up in free hardware. <laughs> and uh, so um, because because I, you know, like I, I kind of have this weird thing where I I'm I'm almost at the point now where I won't buy anything. I will only do challenges for it. <laughs> so I comb the web constantly for things like this. And uh, and Microsoft has this thing called the developer movement where you you do all of these things and you get points and you can get free hardware for it. Like I've got um, my, I've got one of those razor black widow keyboards. Uh, it's, you know, with a hardware mechanical one, it's really clacky. And, uh, and I, and I love it. And it was free from Microsoft. The mo my monitor was free from Microsoft and they had this um, challenge where 
um, I can't remember what the timeline was. It was a week or two weeks or something like that. Or maybe the timeline was longer. I think the timeline was longer, but I only had a week in which to do it because I had other commitments. But basically, I had to do five apps in a week. And (laughs) so it led to some pretty crazy stuff. And I was streaming it a lot um, just because it was, you know, it was it was a neat thing. And and basically what you got out of it was uh, uh, if you could do if you could get all five of them and get them in, then you got a Lumia 1520, which is a pretty it's a big phone it's it had like a 20 megapixel camera on it took gorgeous pictures and so it was like well you know what i've never tried a windows phone so let's make five apps <laughs> and, <laughs> uh and so yeah the, the seaweed obsession came when uh basically i made sort of um uh I made one game that was just you flying and avoiding meteors. And then I was like, well, now now let's turn that game on its side and make it you're a sub avoiding robot fish. And uh, because that was I just I just went to an asset store and went, what do they have? that I think I can make a game out of quickly. <laughs> yeah. So I saw like a spaceship and some rocks. I'm like, boom, that's one game. And then I'm like, uh, there's a submarine and robot fish. Boom. That's another game. And so the second one, I just took the code from the first one, rotated it at 90 degrees and was putting it in. But then I was like, you know, this needs something like it doesn't feel underwatery enough. It's got some bubbles, but how about <laughs> seaweed? And then, um, uh, and then uh, someone on chat and I, you know, I'm trying to remember, uh, who it was now? It was, uh, I think his name was, was it David? Anyway, um, the gentleman I met at GDC, a uh, really nice guy um, who is who had also been working on lar- another weird thing, large format touchscreen games. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone has one of those, like a tabletop touchscreen. Sure, yeah. Um, and the original so, Microsoft Surface. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, um, and uh, so he was in the chat and he was like, I think you need this. And then we just kind of started feeding off each other. And and it just turned into like an hour and a half long of trying to make seaweed look good. <laughs> it was so weird. Was that uh, were you was that on Twitch then you were streaming that? Yeah. And I haven't been streaming a, a lot lately, but I, I keep meaning to go back to it. <laughs> but I'll, the other thing is I haven't I haven't been working on Dot as much as I like lately either. Um, again, client commitments. But sure. um, yeah, but I've I, most of my client commitments are now wrapped up again. I, I'm in a nice clear spot. Usually it, it kind of um, the funny thing is, is because I'm in a government town uh it uh, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier as you lead up to budget time. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. And then what happened because they because basically if they don't spend the money, they lose, they lose it. it. Yep. So what happens is you get this rush of people who want apps and sites and all yeah. this stuff, right? <laughs> like because they, they don't want to lose that in their budget. So Right. You know, they they blow the tech budget as quickly as they can and and you know, and if you're a good developer, you're you know there with a bucket to catch the money, hopefully. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I mean, it hasn't been as much over the you know last little bit, but it's uh, still. And so yeah, now that mo- I've cleared most of that up, it's um, and uh, we have uh, GDX, which is the Game Discovery Exhibition, coming up in about a month. And so now it's like one month of crazy building as much as I can into Dot. <laughs> <laughs> now when you were doing that uh microsoft challenge uh i saw did, did you port any of those apps over to anything else or no no i mean um so yeah i did um uh so one got put on like i found i ended up getting four and then found out that it counts if you built one for um the windows store for like um like the Windows phone versus the Windows store because they were both separate at the time. Ah, okay. And so it counted if I just ported one over. So I, you know, made a crazy, um, you know, spent my last like four hours of the challenge just taking one of the original ones and making it fit a larger format better, uh, like a larger screen better. And mm, mm-hmm. so, yeah, I mean, that was, that was fun. I did it gotcha. all, in, all in either XDK or um, in uh, Construct 2 those ones 
Right. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious because I, I remember reading your blog post about uh, about the challenge and I was like, I really like the idea of, I think you called it forward. Um, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that actually came out of, um, uh, that came out of, there was a, uh, uh, an app called Rondo, I think, or something like that. And basically you would take a picture and send it out into the world and someone random would get it. Um, and then for sending one out, you'd get someone else's random picture from around the world. Right. And so it was this whole weird give one, take one sort mm -hmm. of thing. And, uh, yeah. And, and forward actually, uh, is one that I'd like to uh, come back to again in the future. Um, but, you know, spending a little bit more time on it and actually. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Cause your idea was to just like send someone a challenge word and yeah. then they sent back the picture. So. Yeah. And so everyone could contribute words to sort of a pool and then you'd pick one and uh, yeah, it was basically, like I said, based on the sort of rando give one, pick one kind of concept, except with, I, I tend to do a lot of word stuff like that never makes it to market. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I had a, a, a an idea for a game that is uh, I'd say probably sitting at about 80 percent complete. That is um, breakout, except that uh, hidden in the blocks is a word. And it, so it's multiplayer breakout. And then uh, so it's like uh, a cross between breakout and wheel of fortune. So once you get to a certain point, you can use up some of your points to pause the game and guess what the phrase is. Ah, okay. And, uh, uh, yeah. So, and it's, yeah, it's funny cause that one's just sitting there waiting to be done. But, uh, <laughs> that, that was when I got on dot and I was like, you know what? I want to make a 3d game again. I, you know, it's, it's, it's been many, many years since I'd made anything in 3d and, um, and I just, you know, like the other one wasn't really grabbing me as much and, so now I'm now I'm stuck with dot because I'm I'm too far in now to get <laughs> too distracted. This one has to has to hit. I'm like as soon as I got greenlit, I'm like, oh crap! I really have to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what does that mean exactly for people like my mom who are listening? When you're greenlit by the Steam community, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's just um, basically uh, you put it up on there and uh, you spend a day or two taking abuse from strangers about how. <laughs> terrible your game looks and then all of a sudden one person says something nice and people start voting for it and uh and eventually uh, you know depending on uh, various random factors on the internet if you get enough votes and you get into the top uh 100 or top 50 or whatever um you may or may not be plucked out of the pile by um some sort of elf who lives in valve headquarters um, because nobody really knows what the real process behind doors is. And uh, and then you're allowed to release your game on Steam, and uh, which is a big opportunity. Uh, you know, I mean, even though even though the market's pretty saturated now, I still I'm still excited about it. Um, you know, I hear other other devs complain about how little their game makes. But I'm I mean, I'm I'm an independent. I'm a part time. You know, if. 500 people play my game i'm happy if 500,000 people play my game i'm happier <laughs> <laughs> but also probably more panicked <laughs> sure right right I and mean, is that's... that is that market saturation problem less of a problem if you're doing something specifically for the oculus because of I think so. Yeah, uh, it's you know, there's less there's obviously less games for the Oculus, less games for the HTC Vive and sure. all that stuff. Right. So, I mean, it's uh, some people are comparing it to the mobile boom. I'm not one of those people. Right. Right. <laughs> because, yeah. I mean, it still has a long ways to go. And I mean, it's it's really expensive right now. But right. Uh, yeah. But, I, you know, I'm I, it's still an exciting thing to work in so right what's so the what, uh what would you say is the uh the challenge of doing development for the oculus or at least maybe your challenge maybe not the challenge that everybody would agree on but um my challenges well my first challenge was that um when i first decided i wanted to do an oculus riff game i didn't have one <laughs> I, sure I, 
and I had no plans to get one. <laughs> um, and uh, I, and because uh, because of my weird obsession with trying not to pay for hardware, um, I I spent quite a while uh, building Dot before ever trying it on the Oculus, just kind of visualizing what I wanted it to be and building it out. And then I found out that here in Edmonton at the Stanley Milner library, they have a maker space. Mm. The maker space has Oculus rifts that you can use in the space. Okay. So then I'd go home and I'd build at night and then I'd take my current build in on a USB key sure. and borrow their computer for an hour over lunch uh, to test it out on the Oculus Rift, so that was my my dev <laughs> process. That was that was that was the tough part. And then once once the first GDX here in Edmonton came around, and I I had someone loan me their Oculus Rift so that I could demo the game at GDX, and that was my um that was my uh, kind of a point where I was like, is this going to fly? Let's see what real people feel about this. People who are yeah. just this, uh, you know, this event. And if people like it, then I'll buy myself an Oculus Rift. I'll actually, I'll actually spend the money. <laughs> um, and, uh, and people really loved it. And I mean, and, and one of the things that got me was that there was um, this one kid who came up and he tried it and and he was like, this is so great. I love this so much. And I was like, yeah, a lot of people feel like that when they put on the Oculus. And he said, no, no, I mean the game. I love the game so much. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you are just here for the Oculus? Wow, that's kind of nice. I mean, he was mostly probably, but I mean, sure. it's still nice. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty- I mean, other, th- other than that, the... Um, you know, like challenge wise, it hasn't been that hard, uh, especially in Unity. Uh, OK, e- even from, you know, about a year ago when I started working with it, um, the tools that Oculus made ready for Unity were so simple. It okay. basically just replaces your in-game camera. You drag yep. Yep. in a prefab and it's mostly done. And then you kind of learn to tweak things from there. I mean, uh, one hard thing that people uh, struggle with is uh, things like getting a good crosshair, like a targeting thing in the middle of your view, so people actually know where they're looking. Because even though your head is pointing in one direction, your eyes can be looking up to the left, right? Right. Yeah. And yeah. And it's natural in that environment for you to feel like where my eyes are looking is is what should be activated. Sure. And so you kind of have to put that crosshair there. As an indication of no, this is where you're actually looking. Right, right, <laughs> right. You, you have yeah. to. This is have, this is where the game believes you're focused. Exactly, because until we get, you know, like the fove or whatever, right? So until we get proper eye tracking, yeah, um, that's that's going to be a um, that's going to be an issue. But I mean, it's not a big issue. It didn't take long to figure out, and uh, and some people have there's there's varying levels of solutions. Um, there's like super, super complex. And then there's my insanely simple one where I just put a text object. That's a period or a plus on the screen. Mm-hmm. And because <laughs> unity renders t- text above everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't matter. Right. So wherever you look, there's just, you know, a semi-transparent period in the middle of your look and, <laughs> and, and people catch on really quickly. So, yep. Yeah, other than that, I mean, it's like I said, it's it's been super simple. Um, I love that. Uh, I love that debug cycle of like work on it at home, and then <laughs> you know take it to the take it to the library. It kind of has like a I'm 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 writing software for the Mars rover. I'm not going to know if it worked until the satellite imagery <laughs> comes back tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I don't know. It was. It was fun. It was. Uh, and I mean, I, I got really, I really became a big fan of our makerspace. <laughs> <Over the course. laughs> and now I'm like there with my kids all the time. I'm like, try stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That place is really cool. Like, for sure. I didn't know they had the Oculus there. So I learned something. Yeah. Well, they they did. I, I don't know if they have one working right now. I mean, uh, the, the thing is, is because they were free to use by the public, uh, they got used by the public. Like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so they're they're a little busted up. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, like uh, it's it's tough for them. I mean, at some point they'll probably get some more. Or they'll get some consumer ones or one consumer one, depending. And but uh, yeah, that's really yeah. Good. Their three D printer takes a hit as well because it does so much work. Oh yeah, like the I mean, their queue for the three D printing is two to three weeks. Yep. I mean, but considering you're paying the cost of materials only, right? It's no one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been multiple times I've been in there, and it's been like printing like the gears and pieces to make someone else a three D printer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's funny because that that was like I immediately like sketched that down, and then you covered it because I was like. Oh, how did you get an Oculus when you want to get things from challenges? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you know, and since then, um, because of um, and actually because Dot uh, placed in the Codename Goa competition, um, because of that, um, I've I've managed to get a couple other devices and, and, and that sort of stuff to kind of port it to. And and I got a. Um, uh, do you guys know Toby T O B I I? So they make eye tracking. Um, it's like an eye tracking bar that goes below your monitor. Mm, okay. And so uh, I went over and I talked to them. They were actually at um, uh, at MIGS, and uh, so the what is it Montreal International Games Summit? Is that the what the abbreviation is? Something like that. Sounds right. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, when I was at MIGS, uh, I saw them there and it was funny because I walked over to their booth and uh, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And they had some great demos there and I'm looking around and and, you know, I was like, this is really neat. Like the eye tracking is really cool. And I'm like, you know, thanks for showing me, blah, 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 blah. Walked back to my booth and then a guy comes over to me later and he's playing the playing um, because, I, you know, we couldn't get the Oculus set up at the event so that he was just playing dot without the Oculus rift. Um, and, um, and he goes, you know what, what would be really great for this game? He's like, as if you use that Toby thing over there in it. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> like I was standing <laughs> right there. And so I talked to them. Yeah. They sent me a unit. And so I'm going to implement that because the, the cool thing about the Toby is that because it just goes below the monitor and they're actually uh, they've got a, an MSI, like a high end MSI laptop that's coming out with it may actually be released already uh, where it's built into the MSI laptop. And uh, but the cool thing is, is as you look up towards like the top corner of the screen, um, they can actually you can actually um, tie it through Unity uh, to your camera so that when you look up towards the top right or towards the right of the screen, it pans the camera over in that direction mm. so that you get this cool effect of it's almost like having VR adjust on your monitor because looking around actually turns the camera. So you get that feeling of there's more to see than just your screen. Sure. Yeah. And it's it's a really weird effect, but it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> And so why did you choose uh, Unity, say, over some of the other engines like Unreal? Um, it was uh, one of the big things was that um, kind of over the course of, you know, my you know years of working with different companies and stuff, uh, we had one company where uh, they had a client who really needed something done in .NET. And so they were like, you know, we can nail this client if you learn C sharp. So we're going to give you a weekend class in it. And that's, that's what you get. And so I, I went and I learned C sharp in a weekend and then we took on the project and I, you know, and I muddled through the project, but then, you know, I, I learned to work in C sharp more and more and more, and I use it all the time now. And so when, you know, when, when I was looking at different engines, the fact that um, unity worked like that you could actually use Visual Studio with it and program in C Sharp. It just seemed like it was the quickest path for me mm. to get to where I wanted to go. And uh, there was um, – um, and I'm, again, I'm terrible with names, but uh, there were these guys out of Britain who made this 
fantastic Unity course on um, on the site Udemy. Yep. And uh, and and I saw it on sale one day. And I was like, well, this is it. Like, this is, you know, I'm going to pay my uh, whatever it was, $30, $40 for. And it's a like the course is ridiculous. Like there's I think there's something like 40 something hours of instruction in it. Wow. Code samples and 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 both the guys are super like engaged with their community. And so you ask a question and either someone from the community answers it almost right away or one of them does. And, and it was just, it was, it was mind blowing. Like um, my first project um, for unity was a, um, it was uh, we needed to do uh, a vending machine um, that had, prizes displayed in it that people would do like jumping jacks and that sort of stuff to get the prizes out of it. And, uh, it was called the, uh, the Edmonton fit finder <laughs> and it was for one of the, one of the, um, uh, recreation centers here for their opening. And so they wanted to do this like, you know, viral video kind of thing and put this up in a couple of locations and have people do either creative tasks or physical tasks to get these prizes. And so um, when they when when one of the creatives at the ad firm I was um, working for pitched first pitched this, um, I already knew that I wanted to learn Unity and I all and I had already bought the course at that time, um, but I just hadn't had time to get into it. So I said, let's build that thing in Unity. And uh, and then that, of course, gives me the, you know, the deadlines and the things that I need to learn. Yeah. It. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so learn it or don't have a job. All right. I'm learning. So it's good motivation for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And those actually those same guys um, who did that course have now put out uh, an Unreal course and uh, I kickstarted that and I will take that course as soon as I have a project that requires it. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Yes. Yeah, speaking of uh, Kickstarter, I saw like some of your Indiegogo uh, uh, campaigns. Oh, sorry to bring up the. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, you know, honestly, one of them was for a friend and it was for an art studio here in Edmonton that wanted to expand a fantastic little place called the Daffodil Gallery. And uh, she was just she's just the most I shouldn't say she was because it sounds like she's not with us anymore, but she is. But the gallery <laughs> is gone. Um, and uh, so the the business next to them moved out and the uh, the the property management company said, Hey, we'll give you that space at an incredibly low price, but you'll have to sign this amount of a, a lease. And so I said, well, you know what? I'd love to help you out. I love the gallery. So I helped her put together a, an Indiegogo campaign and, and it went well ish, but not well enough. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, and it wasn't that she needed to expand. It was just that if she could get enough of a community around it and that sort of stuff, she would like to, and uh, yep. it just yeah, yeah it didn't happen and so um and then my second one was a really weird one <laughs> <laughs> and i don't i don't think that that um i don't think it ever would have actually happened but um uh in uh in a couple of years ago i became obsessed with the idea of um virtual death <laughs> and um how we perceive it and um, just because um, I kind of I could kind of see the end of the MMO era coming right like it was it was games were starting to taper off they were starting to close I mean you know even World of Warcraft can't be here forever and I started wondering like what happens at the end of an MMO's life cycle like you've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into characters sometimes you know per character and then the server just blinks out of existence so what happens to these characters like you know like these these beings these virtual <laughs> beings that you've loved so much and i was like there should be a virtual graveyard 
I was like, I should be able to through the API of like, so a game announces it's shutting down. If it has an API, you should be able to log in, pull all of your characters records and have a virtual space where there's a graveyard where you can go back a couple of years from now and see screenshots and comments from other people who played with you and, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, and you could, uh, and I envisioned that you could, you know, you could put flowers on the grave and they'd wither away or you could plant a tree near the grave and watch it grow year by year. And, you know, it's just like this weird, almost like, high, like morbid <laughs> sort of <laughs> like homage to the death of MMOs. And uh, and and so I was like, you know, like, let's kickstart it, see what happens and or Indiegogo it, I guess, and see what happens. And not much happened. I mean, it's not a, it was it, it was a wildly unsuccessful, but still pretty fun endeavor. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a huge I, I don't think I'll ever kickstart or Indiegogo anything again. I may do a Patreon at some point. Sure. Yeah, I, I liked what um, what you had said about that campaign. Like, I think on your blog was just, you know, you said like, uh, you know, everyone was making jokes about the potato salad thing. I'm sure we even did on the podcast. And but you said like that seems to be sort of key in some of those areas is to just like ask for a lot less and you'll do better than say asking for like 30 grand. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, honestly, like right now, if I were to, if I were to ask for anything, I mean, it's just me, right? Like why would I need money? Like, I mean, I, I mean, everyone needs money, but why would I need money for my, for my project when I'm doing all the stuff and I'm doing it part time. And I mean, I'd love to do it full time. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, but um, right now, the only thing I would like is just a new laptop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'll do a Kickstarter for a laptop, but, or maybe I'll just struggle through with what I've got and launch the game and hope that it makes enough to buy a new laptop. <laughs> it's, uh, funding is always uh, an interesting bear. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, it, it becomes a lot tougher when you have a team, right? And that's, um, right. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm I'm in a good spot right now where I mean I've got a steady job and I've got uh um thanks to Microsoft I've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of server credits. So <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah, don't get us started about teams. My goodness. <laughs> Paul is terrible. Uh. <laughs> No, we we started a Patreon not too long ago, and uh, the issue with that um, is that since we started it as the podcast, um, it's kind of fun to try to figure out how to pay each other between Canada and the U.S. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so so right now Paul is sitting on all of our our money and saying, "How do I pay you?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's really hard." <laughs> 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 right how do i check. pay how do i pay you without paying the bank all of the money basically <laughs> yeah 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 well you know what you do is you just you know you put it in a tube you know like you put cash in a tube yeah and then you take it to the border and you fire it over the fence like a like a drug lord like <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Hey, so this is the end of part one of our uh, chat with Aaron Clifford of Dot Game, uh, D-A-W-T-G-A-M-E dot com. Head there and check it out. Uh, this was recorded in April, so uh, there's been lots of uh, developments since then. He's got lots of great media on his uh, web page there, so go check that out. And uh, while you're surfing around, you can always head to MontrealSauce.com to get links to other things that we talked about in the show, uh, links to me and Chris and our Twitter pages and our Facebooks and our uh, Tinder, no, not Tinders, um, our Patreon. Hey, Patreon would be a good place to go. Patreon.com slash msauce if you'd like to support the show. Uh, we'll be back hopefully next week with uh, part two of our conversation with Aaron Clifford. Uh, and we will be back live recording. I'm kind of thinking it's probably going to be after the new year starts back up again. But uh, stay tuned because we might have some some surprises for you in store over the holidays here. 
Uh, have a happy, I hope you had a happy Canadian Thanksgiving like a million weeks ago. And uh, have a happy Thanksgiving next week. Um, and we will talk to you soon.